This presentation will be about the definition and the interpretation of the net present value. The net present value is one of those elements that are very important in order to evaluate the financial or efficiency of investments and of course also of projects. When we look at a project, we have an initial investment and then we have future cash flows. And we want to know how much do these future cash flows represent in today's value. So we can compare it with, in fact, the original investment. We want to know if we are making a profit or not. And it's very important to see that our initial investment, typically called R0, which is considered to be a negative value, and we want to see what are the present values of the future cash flows. And basically, when you combine those, when you take the present values, the sum of all those present values of the future cash flows, and we subtract the initial investment, this gives us the net present value. And you can see the formula, it's the summation from the start from period zero, the initial investment till the end of the lifetime of the project of the cash flows divided by the discounting factor, one plus i to the power, the power uh, j, and j is the period that we are considering. Since R0 is separately, uh, let's say, it's an initial investment, is considered at the time zero, at the moment we start the investment, we can also add the formula that we look at the discounted future cash flows plus R0, the initial investment. And I remind you again that R0 is a negative value. When we look at the result of the net present value, we have to consider two possibilities. Either the net present value is larger or equal than zero, or it is smaller than zero. When we have a net present value larger than zero, it means that the future cash flows, the present value of the future cash flows, is higher than the initial investment. And that, of course, means that we are making a profit. On the other hand, when it's equal to zero, it means that we are in fact just compensating the initial investment. We are not making a profit, but we are not at loss too. When the net present value is negative, on the other hand, it means that the future cash flows, the discounted future cash flows, are less than the initial investment. And that also means basically that we are making a loss. Now, when we look at the net present value and we consider a simple case where we have identical cash flows, we make an estimation and over the future, we see that the cash flows are identical. Now, once these cash flows are all the same, we can basically rewrite the formula. And the formula then becomes the sum of those discounted cash flows means R divided by 1 plus the interest rate to the power J. And R is now a constant. And we can go back to the previous calculations where we looked at the present value of a series of identical cash flows. We can write this as an expression R, the value of the future cash flows, multiplied with 1 minus 1 plus i to the power minus n divided by the interest rate. And of course, we subtract the initial investment or we add R0 because R0 is a negative value. Let's have a calculation. We have an initial investment of $100,000. We have future cash flows of $40,000. That's what 40k means. We have an interest rate of 17% and we consider five cash flows of so five years of cash flows at 40K. When we put this in the formula, we find that the net present value is 40K multiplied with one minus 1.17 
to the power of minus 5 divided by 0 0.17 and we subtract the 100k, this is R0, and we find a net present value of $27,973.85. So in this case, we have a positive result. The net present value is positive, so we are happy our investment or our project has in fact a positive outcome. Now, we don't always have those fixed cash flows. The cash flows depend on the actual situation and we may have to consider what is happening in the future. We want to have a realistic overview of what the future will bring us. So we try to find the best estimation of those future cash flows. Let's have a look at an exercise with variable cash flows. Here we have, again, a discount rate of 17%. We have an invest investment, initial investment of 100,000. After year one, we have a cash flow of 70K. Year two, 30K. Year three, 30K again. Year four, 25K. And year five, 10K. What we have to do now is to discount these cash flows. We want to know the present value of each of those cash flows. So for 70K, since we have 17%, we have to divide the 70K by the discount factor 1.17, which gives us $59,829. I rounded up to the dollar because the cents will not make a lot of difference in the total calculation. For accounting reasons, that's something different. But here for the calculation of the net present value, their effect will be very small, basically. We do the same for the 30K. So now we divide the 30K by 1.17 to the square, which gives us $21,915. We do the same for the third period. We have again 30K, which we now divide by 1.17 to the third power, which gives us $18,731. The 25K we discount over four periods, so we divide by 1.17 to the fourth power, and it gives us $13,341. And then the last one, the five period 5, we have the 10K, we divide by 1.17 to the 5th power, which gives us 4,561. The only thing we have to do now is to add up all those present values, and we find an amount of 118,377. Now, the net present value we get by subtracting the initial investment, and that initial investment is $100,000. So basically, the net present value is equal to $18,370. And we are happy because it's larger than zero. Now we see there was a small difference, although when we would look at the cash flows as such, there will not be a very big difference. But we see that basically with the changing cash, cash flows, we find a lower a net present value in this case. So let's have a look at some possible issues with the net present value. Now, when we have certain elements, we may have some limitations when we look at the net present value. One of the elements is when we have large, uh, let's say, end of life investments consider the dismantling of a nuclear power plant, of a chemical installation, of a very specialized laboratory, things like that. Those things can cost a lot of money just to dismantle at the end of the life cycle. Now, when we look at the discounting, we have that amount we put in our uh, cash flows, that very large end life amount, that we are going to consider at the end of the life. And it's, of course, a negative cash flow. It's an additional cost. Now, when we look at 50 years, 60 years, depending on the lifespan, 
we see that the discounted value of that long, uh, la let's say, um, end-of-life investment is discounted so much that the effect of the net present value is minimal. And that may lead to the fact that we're overestimating the net present value. In this case, we have to follow an other way to calculate the net present value. We don't put the end of life span investment there, but what we are going to do is we are going to create what we call provisioning. We're putting away money over the years that will give us a future value that's equal to the investment that we need to do at that moment. Basically, we are subtracting that investment, those provisions, from our normal cash flows. And when we do that, the effect on the NPV is different and we get a more realistic estimation of the net present value. These are things that we have to take into account when we are dealing with net present value. But net present value is very important and it's in fact one of the parameters that we have to consider when we are dealing with projects. A net present value larger than zero is an indication that our project is in fact a good investment. Let's now introduce another parameter. And the other parameter that relates to the net present value is the profitability index. The profitability index is in fact an index which tells us if a project is profitable or not. And when the PI, the profitability index, is larger than one, we have a profit. When it's smaller than one, we have a loss. Now, basically what we are going to do is to have the sum of the discounted cash flows, the present value of those future cash flows, we divide them by the initial investment, by the absolute value of R0. So you see the formula here, the PI is the sum of the present value, is the present value of all the future cash flows divided by R0, but we take out the minus sign. That's why we have the absolute value sign here. We can calculate this. We can calculate it for the example with the uh, equal cash flows, but let's have a look at the example with the variable cash flows. This is the table that we had before. We have a discount rate of 17% again, the 100,000 and our future cash flows are 70, 30, 30, 25 and 10K. From the previous example, from the previous calculations, you may remember that the present value of all those cash flows is 110,000, sorry, 118,377 dollars. When we divide this by 100,000, we find that the profitability index is 1.18, which means it's larger than 1, which means a profit. Of course, we've seen that before, and we have found that the uh, net present value in this example was also positive. Now, when we look at the profitability index, we have to be a little bit careful. Because basically, when we're looking at the profitability index, the element that's happening here is that we are, in fact, taking out the size of the project. It's very easy to compare different projects based on the profitability index. But what can be the problem here is that we may have a very highly profitable project with a high profitability index, but the net present value or the profit is rather slow, uh, low. Sorry. So basically, we lose the size of the project, which has an advantage. On the other hand, when we are comparing projects, we have to also take into account what is the absolute value of the profit. And that's something we may forget when we just look at the profitability index. Be careful with it. It's a good parameter to compare different projects, and we can set a minimum profitability for certain projects, 
but we should never lose out of sight the fact that the absolute value of the profit is also very important for an investment. That was it. We defined very important parameters, the net present value, the profitability index. These are very important tools when you're looking at investments. Also, when you're dealing with projects, those two parameters should be part of your toolbox and you have to understand them. Perhaps you don't always have to calculate them as a project manager, as a financial person. Of course, you have to be able to calculate them. You have to be able to use Excel formulas. We will see that in the next presentation. But this is another important tool for your project management or your investment toolbox, wherever you want to use it. I thank you for being here. This is the end of this video. See you later. Thank you and bye bye.